Hello everybody, welcome back to Cinema Savvy. It is myself, George, bringing a brand new review. And today I'm going to be reviewing The Iron Claw, of course, written and directed by Sean Dirk and starring Zac Efron, which is out in UK cinemas next Friday, the 9th of February, of course, released in December in America many months ago. So I'm going to be talking about that a little bit later on. But as always, I do want to hear from people talking about this film. So please do comment if you have seen the film already, what you liked about it, what you didn't like it. Do you know the real life story? Do you know much about the behind the scenes, how this was put together? I do want to hear from people. It's a film I'm very curious about, different reactions from people's backgrounds. I think how you know the story is going to affect how you watch it for maybe the first or the second time. And it's a really exciting one, a film I've been very, very anticipated for. And one that I think has come unfortunately a little bit too late over here. Because of course we always end up moaning about the US-UK release date differences for these types of films. But... As I mentioned, I want to hear from you. If you want to find out about other videos, yes, we've been a little bit quiet uh, in the last week or two. There's a lot of stuff coming. Argyle's coming out. American Fiction's coming out here. We've got TV shows. There's so much happening at the moment. If you want to find out about other videos, other releases, go get us on our social medias. You can get them on linktree.com slash cinema savvy. But as I mentioned, I am reviewing The Iron Claw. And as always, I'm going to give my thoughts heading into this film. Now, if you haven't seen the film, I don't want to say spoiler alert, this is obviously based off real life. I'm going to be discussing some of the real life, real life stuff. So if you haven't seen you know, nothing about the story of Von Erichs, you don't know anything, maybe tune out now. If you do know, you want to know more, then maybe this is one to stay for because I'm going to be discussing definitely the second half of the film at least. And, and this is kind of where I'm going with this, the background. If you're familiar with the channel, you know I've spoke about wrestling a lot before. It's something that I used to be massive on. I then dipped out and since sort of... July, August last year, I've really got back into it. And then The Iron Claw was starting to be teased. You were seeing trailers. You were seeing uh, MJF in AEW was in the film, seeing promotional events, him and John Cena at the premiere. This started to gain momentum. And I don't want to get into the Oscar discussion with it. It's going to be hard not to talk about the Oscars. But it missed the festival circuit. And... I believe, I think I read that it wasn't ready in time. Uh, I know this was a waiver to continue shooting during the SAG strikes, which goes to show about A24's relationship with the SAG as well. But it's a film that very much missed that stereotypical Oscar prelude. I believe there were some issues getting the screeners out to the viewers as well, because this is a film a lot of people said, where is it with respect to Oscar nominations? I think it made a couple of long lists, but obviously it didn't make that jump from long list to nomination. And I'm going to try and discuss that a little bit at the end, but I've been very excited for this. And my background with the Von Erich family is I know of the story. I don't know the intricate details, the ins and outs, but I knew the core story that the film would be telling. And it's something that I thought, if they can translate this to the big screen properly, it's going to be one hell of a film to watch. Uh, and it's got the potential to also horrifically backfire if not done with the right taste. I know Zac Efron spoke actually a lot about meeting with Von Eric, Kevin Von Eric, the last brother, and a few other things since the film released. He spoke about it was more important to get the viewpoints of the family. There's been varying news articles about this as well. And obviously we've got a few of the big wrestling things in the news at the moment, which you know more details I'm sure will come out with the big Netflix documentary in the next few months. But talking the Iron Claw, I mentioned I was excited. And just my initial thoughts after viewing it yesterday... For Cine World, to be fair, it was very busy for a Tuesday night preview screening. We don't get it as if for another 10, 11 days. It's a member screening. It was a lot busier than some of the ones I've been to recently, which I think is a really good sign. I went with two friends and I absolutely adored it, if I'm, if I'm honest. I kind of knew what I was expecting. I read a little bit, but this film completely, I don't want to say broke me, but you know what you're going in for. And when the film can deliver with a premise such as this with Something that is almost impossible to believe is based off real events. Something in which they had to change real events for the benefit of a film, i.e. missing another brother that we, we, the film obviously doesn't mention, doesn't bring up, doesn't speak of, it doesn't include, because it would make the film that much more depressing. There's that sort of stuff that sits in your mind a bit. And I think it's best to start, if I'm being really honest, with, with Zac Efron. Yes, he's a lead in this film. People spoke about him for Best Acts nomination. This is quite easily the best Zac Efron performance I have seen. I absolutely love him in the film. His physique is terrifying. The opening shot of him getting out of bed and just seeing him like that is sort of like, whoa. Like, I think maybe because it's a recognisable actor looking like that compared to looking at wrestlers who you always think of as, as that physique, that's something that I've thought of the more the years have gone by where you see these types of films. And it was really not just caught off guard by that, but the whole cast, Jeremy Allen White, of course, who 
has of course been on the news recently, not just for sweeping globes and Emmys, but also his advert, which I think was shot whilst they're making this film. It's a really interesting story that I think if you don't know about it, the less you know, the better it's going to be. It's not going to make it any easier to watch. It's not going to make it any tougher to watch. But what this film does, it does an incredible job at presenting this wrestling family, taking them from the highs right through to their lows and then bringing it back to where we are now. And it's actually really difficult to talk about than being honest. Sometimes the the real life uh, adaptations can be tougher. I don't think adaptations is the word. Films inspired by real events can be a lot tougher to translate on screen. But with this, there's there's an approach that I didn't think this film would do. It's not sat there glorifying the wrestling industry. It's also not sat there saying, look how terrible the wrestling industry is. It's not trying to prove a point or say anything. Really, the themes of this is both family and toxic masculinity. No, it's not Fast and Furious, but it's one of those where you couldn't help but think as the film was progressing more and more, you start to see who has been affecting this family of people. They speak of the Von Erich curse in the film. And that plays a part with Kevin and what happens with his relationship with his son and his wife. But that's not believable without an ensemble, without the brothers in the roles they are in, having a screen presence. When we get moments of them in the wrestling, it's got to be believable for it to work on screen. How many films have we seen where we get a wrestling segment that looks terrible, that looks ridiculous? And obviously I'm thinking to Spider-Man 2002, you go and cast... Uh, and the same with Rocky, Rocky 3 or 4, sorry, with Hulk Hogan. You go and bring real wrestlers into that to, to elaborate those scenes. Whereas with this film, it is almost all actors. I know Chavo Guerrero trained a lot of them in this film. He's got a very, very, very brief role, which I don't think you'd know in, unless you saw it in the credits. But he's been responsible for training them. And I want to say, first and foremost, he's an incredible job. Um, I do want to flag this as well. The, the annual discussion of where's the best stunt award for the Oscars, if this were a thing... The Iron Claw gets nominations of some of the real big, big hitters of last year. Um, the fact that I was reading that behind the scenes that the actors for the shooting of this were doing actual one-take wrestling matches and they were picking camera angles from that. The physical performance that everybody goes through is astounding and I'm so glad it's not one of those films where you can see blatant doubles covering for this, that, the other. I mentioned MJF earlier, the fact he has a cameo in this film too, which is great, a real blink and you miss it one. I think he might be an executive producer or attached somewhere, I think I've read online, but it's a really exciting film to look at from a wrestling fan's perspective, but as a film perspective, you also can't help but think this is incredible. Now, it's only January the 31st here at the time of recording. The first month of the year is gone. This is probably going to be a film that I look at throughout the entire year. It's probably a film I will see again. Maybe not at the cinema. It's one I do want to pick up. And it kind of reminds me of The Wrestler, which is not hard to think about starring Mickey Rourke. Obviously, that one was not based off real life, but you're seeing what people put themselves through physically and mentally in an industry such as this. And it isn't glossy and televised. Yes, there's a Ric Flair role played by somebody. Yes, we get a bit of wrestling politics with the territories. But to see the implications this had on a family, uh, as I mentioned, a family of brothers with a film ending with one brother being in such a place that they couldn't actually include another one. Probably the saddest story of the life of them being really honest. I mean, the, incre- the whole story is quite depressing, really. You could hear some people crying at moments during the film. And it, it's a film that leaves you in a, a tremendous emotional mess, if I'm being honest. And that's, I think, a testament to the source material, to the fact that they've took the story and they've honoured it with respect. They've put it to camera. I mentioned Zac Efron's performances. Harris Dickinson, I think, actually steals this film. I knew he'd been cast in it. I've only seen him in one or two things. But I thought he is tremendous in this. And that I feel that he is not the emotional glue of the film, but every time he came on screen, I felt like he was stealing. And maybe that's because everyone's talking about Zac Efron. Everyone's talking about Jeremy Allen White. Nobody's really spoke about Harris Dickinson. And I think he's sensational in this film. And from an ensemble perspective, if any of these roles are miscast, the film can't function. But they absolutely nail it, even bringing in Lily James as well to play the wife, to bring in that emotional support. She's fantastic from the scenes we get with her. And I just couldn't not be watching it. There are moments where it's uncomfortable to watch. You might know what's going to happen next, but your eyes are glued to the screen. You want to see more of them. And it does a really rare thing with film where across the space of two hours, you build a relationship up with a group of characters and it sort of tears you down one by one. And even if you weren't familiar with them, you're so glued to the performances, you're in awe of it, that as we start to lose characters from this film, it becomes more devastating. And in respect of that, Zac Efron's performance, you look at the beginning, it's very much this, 
yes, it's a physical performance, but you look at him at the beginning, I know people laughed about the haircut, the, 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 the 80s hair and all that sort of stuff, but as the film gets on, his performance improves so much more. And I don't want to get into the Oscar talk too much at the moment, but could he be one of the people that missed out the most from this year? I've not seen all five candidates, so I can't give that viewpoint. But I'd be very surprised, like a Margot Robbie type, if he wasn't sat in that 6-10 to 10 slot, that Zac Efron in this film is unbelievable. And I do think there should be some recognition for what he has done. Whether it is the fact that, again, this missed a festival run, this missed the... Um, I guess you could say marketing with the voters, maybe even some WWE cross promotion, not that they needed to promote this given the story. It's not the sort of thing they'd want to, to put ahead of a PPV and stuff like that. But it is one way you do wonder that if this film would have the right backing, the right marketing, and this is A24, it's done very well financially for them. I think it's their like top three, in the top three now for domestic US grosses. But I think there's a massive audience that have missed out on this. I'm not saying put it in a can and wait another year and do a festival run properly. But I do think this is a film that a lot more people would be interested in seeing. It's got a great soundtrack. Of course, Tom Sawyer's all over the trailer. It's the entrance music used by one of the Von Erich brothers back in the 80s as well. And there's something about this where I feel that people will be speaking about spheres. Now, I don't have any brothers. I've got two older sisters. So I can't talk about that brothership bond that the film has. But I can tell you that it feels so genuine that it's something that I felt I've missed across my life. And it's a very weird thing to say that on a film review. But that's where it left me. And I think so much, as I mentioned, is down to the performances, the solid script, the direction, and actually the editing is something I don't normally speak about in reviews, but there's a real conscious choice, whether it's through the editing, whether the combination of the director, the cinematography, but so many shots begin as a long shot, and we just slowly, slowly spend time with them, and there'll be these, these great sequences done in not even one take, just one shot, slowly zooming in from a long shot toward a close-up at the end, and you move with the film that more often than not with those scenes as you're getting closer to the actors the emotion starts to bring him on i think it's a really unique decision that they did with this again, i'm not sure who would have specifically chosen that but i actually feel like with all the oscar talk people have spoke of best editing is something again which could have been spoken about but then again we look at this year's oscars and it is a phenomenal year so far and there's going to be some great films that miss out i do think this is a film that has missed out based on that and kind of where i'm going through review is that i can it can satisfy me in two ways from a wrestling fan perspective, this is great. This is the sort of wrestling film I'd be recommending for people to watch. The same of the wrestlers I've said before. Then you connect from film perspective. And this is quite easily my favourite film of 2024 so far. Yes, I'm going off UK release dates. Yes, it's only been January. But you can look at technical marvels such as The Zone of Interest, which I did. I spoke about in a review. A very difficult review. Impossible to compare to this. But I didn't feel connected to anybody. I know that's a conscious decision. But not everybody enjoys that in their filmmaking and what they're watching. And whereas with this one, I was rooting for everybody, which makes the second half of the film so much more destructive, which makes it so much more emotional. And there's a sequence, I think the penultimate scene in the film just absolutely rocked me. I hadn't seen anything like it. If you've watched it, you'll know what I mean. It's something that some films have done very poorly over the years. And I'm struggling to think of a creative decision, such as that penultimate scene with, with all the brothers, that's left me feeling like that, like watching that in a film. It's an incredible piece of work. I think it's a film people should go out and see when this comes out. If you haven't seen it, if you're in the UK and you're wondering about seeing it at the cinema, yes, go. You'll be gutted come the end of it, but it is worth it for that emotional ride. And also, I just love seeing wrestling on the big screen. It's quite simple as that, really. And from a film perspective, I do think the film fans are going to have something to enjoy. I think it's quite appealing in a, being really honest with a global nature that I can't imagine not watching this story, not watching this film, sorry, and not following it and just being in this really difficult scenario coming into it and it's hard to talk about in a review what i am going to be doing is watching dark side of the ring i think season one episode five they did an actual whole episode on the von eric family so if people aren't familiar with that show i'm not plugging it but it's very much as it is in the tar dark side of the ring some of the darker stories from the history of wrestling that maybe people aren't aware of or something to elaborate more a documentary series i think they're on five seasons now the Von Eric episode is one to watch. If you are curious about learning more about the family, if you're curious about learning more about this film, there's a lot you can read into with it. And I think it's a film people should go out and see. I think it's genuinely phenomenal. And I think it's one that's going to, even if you're not a fan of wrestling, I do think it's something you're watching. It'll just open yourself up to, to what this family went through and at a point thinking, how how is this possible? 
and that's some of the questions it leaves and it's a really weird way to end a review because it's such a tricky film to talk about given its real life situations but at the same time as that it's a film I've been very much looking forward to and I'm, I'm very happy leaving the cinema yesterday I was in a very good place with this film I was so excited I thought they nailed it and as I said it's one for everybody to watch so that's going to do it for this review I mentioned there's a lot of other films coming out Argo jumps to mind American Fiction here we still need reviews on the channel for Past Lives and Anatomy of a Fool to get the 10 out for Best Film at the Oscars. We're obviously building up to the Oscars with that. There's going to be other videos. Myself and Tate are going to be doing a video going through what we watched in January later this week. So when we've got a date, we'll put it on our social media feeds. We've been a bit quiet the last week, but there's been so much happening. There's been a lot of TV. Mass of the Era streaming every Friday. Our big review came out of that last week. Thank you to everybody new and old who watched that review. It's one of our most viewed reviews in the last couple of years if I'm being honest so that was a lovely delight and I'm excited to see what else people are interested in watching so please do comment your thoughts on the Iron Claw and be sure to join us on the next one. Take care.